Alrighty guys, welcome to your 36th video and in this video hopefully what we're going to be doing is finishing up this very simple web browser. So again, in the last tutorial we just made the main brains of the display, now let's go ahead and add it to the screen. So right outside this little semicolon, go ahead and hit add, new scroll pane and just go ahead and d stick display in there. Now where are we going to put this? center. We'll just go ahead and put this in the center of the screen. So now we just need to do two more simple things. Set the size of it. And the size of this what can show up nicely in this video on YouTube. 500 by 300 would probably look pretty good. And set visible equal to true because we don't want to make a program and make it invisible because that would be a complete waste of time. So now our GUI and actually our constructor itself is completely taken care of. Pretty cool, huh? So the only other thing we have to do is fix this error which pretty much says, okay, you keep calling this load crap method and I don't have any built-in method called load crap. Only you would make something like that, Bucky. So go ahead and make that method right now. So again, like I've been saying for the last, I don't know how many, two tutorials, load crap is basically the method that reads an HTML file or whatever URL you're pointing to and it displays it on the screen. So let me add a comment, load crap to display on the screen. Now we'll just go ahead and make this a private because we're not going to be using it in any class. Void load crap. And you gotta say it long like that. Crap. Okay, so this obviously gets passed in a string, and the string is we'll just call user text because that's the information that the user typed in, you know, unless they clicked on a hyperlink. But anyways, it gets passed in a string called user text, and the user text is basically the URL which website do you want to go to. So what we need to do now is we actually need to build a try catch statement. So let me go ahead and make the frame for that try catch and for catch exception e and I'll just put the simple system out print line not very formal here but I'll just put something like crap now the reason that you put a try catch statement is is we don't want our program to crash obviously whenever they type in you know a malformed URL so if they type in a proper URL like HTTP colon backslash backslash google.com then the program is going to run and this code right here is going to execute but if they type in something like I don't know um HTZZ backslash goggles.com that obviously isn't a valid URL and this you know our program isn't going to crash it's just going to say crap on our little display window on the bottom so what do we want to try hopefully this is the code that gets executed well the first thing we want to do is we want the web page that they go to to display in the main window so display set page and hopefully this should, yep set page now as you can see if I roll over this documentation it says uh, you guys can't see it but I'll read the documentation to you guys it says sets the current URL being displayed so basically the cool thing about Java is it already made this method and this is probably the most powerful method um, that's built in Java for at least this tutorial it takes whatever URL we pass it in as a string and it displays it in the display window so set page we just need to pass in user text copy this paste it in so say we um, I don't know type in the new boston.com in the URL well what this is going to do is it's going to set it's going to read the file from the new boston.com and it's going to put it in the display window so all of that confusing stuff that you guys thought we were probably going to have to program by hand line by line it's all taken care of in the set page method pretty freaking sweet so the only other thing i want to do is of course whenever you go to a web page like uh, the new boston.com if you look at the top of your i, I like how i'm like you know keep throwing that in there I don't even mean to do that oh you know like the new boston.com like who would ever want to go to that plug plug anyways whenever you go to a website the web address or the URL stays in the address bar at the top it doesn't get deleted every time so in order to keep that just go ahead 
input address bar set text equal to a string and that string is user text as well so basically well let me look about this okay that looks pretty much like our program is complete now the only other thing we have to do is of course this doesn't have a main method so we have to build one more other class for that and uh, I guess we'll do that well we'll do it in this tutorial so let me go ahead and talk you guys through this one last time and then I will go ahead and uh, build my main method so we inherited, I mean, excuse me, we imported everything and we inherited from the JFrame class so we can just make the GUI. Now the GUI consists of two main things, our address bar at the top and the editor pane, which is gonna, you know, is gonna be the main big display where all the contents are gonna be displayed. Now in the constructor, what we did is we named the application just so it has a title at the top and the address bar pretty much is the place where the user types in the URL. Now whenever they hit enter what it's going to do is called this load crap method which we'll get to in a second. Now whenever things get displayed on the screen if there are any links what it's going to do is it's going to put a listener on top of all those links. Now if the user clicks on one of those links then what it's going to do is it's going to grab the URL from that link convert it to a string and pass it into this load crap method as well. So basically you can pass uh, URLs into this load crap method in a bunch of different ways, either by clicking a link or typing it in manually. But anyways, once you do, it gets passed in, and then pretty much Java takes that string and passes it into set page, which you know takes that URL and displays it on the screen. So this is pretty much the most important line in your browser. Without this, it's definitely definitely not going to work. So now what we need to do is actually go ahead and make a class that can run this. So let me go ahead and make a new class. So new class and what do we name this one? Read file. So I'll just put like read file. Why can't I capitalize the freaking F? File main and I might as well go ahead and add my main method in there okay now you're just messing up and go ahead and hit finish get rid of all this crap and get rid of all this crap too tighten this up a little bit that's what she said alright so now the only import we have to make right here is actually I'm gonna go ahead and steal it swing jframe and this doesn't inherit anything so what we need to do is just make an object from read file so we can and I'll just name it something like read file dude because it's like dude read my file so read file dude equals new read file so now we can use all the crap in the read file class so dude not did dude set default close operation to j okay my freaking computer is going crazy to J frame exit on close alright so now this class is set up and again if you don't know what's going on right here basically I just needed to access this class right here because it didn't have a main method in it so what this class does is it accesses the main method now once I press this run button we should be good to go but you know what obviously I am a douchebag and I'm gonna make you guys wait into the next video because I actually want to put this full screen and show you guys how awesome this browser is gonna be so anyways thank you guys for watching don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you guys in the next video we're gonna be testing out this bad boy